Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the definition and classification of lipids. So this is the part 2 of our discussion. Here are your learning targets. So last time we have talked about the different types of lipids. We have the simple, compound, and derived. We also discussed triglycerides, glycolipids, phospholipids. In this video, we are going to talk about the other types of lipids. Let's start with the glycerophospholipids. This is a complex lipid that forms the primary structural component of cell membranes. So this is the most abundant class of lipids in biological membranes. The structure is almost the same with phospholipids, but there's a distinct difference. So first, we start with the glycerol or the 3-carbon alcohol. Then you will also see two fatty acid chains attached to the first and second carbon of glycerol. Remember, these fatty acid chains, they give the hydrophobic property of glycerophospholipids. And this could either be saturated or unsaturated. The last one would be the phosphate group. So remember, this gives the hydrophilic property of phospholipids. The same thing happens in glycerophospholipids. Now here, the phosphate group is linked to other groups, which will create a different type of glycerophospholipid. For example, would be choline. When you have a choline attached to your phosphate group, it will now be called phosphatidylcholine. Now for the properties, again this is amphipathic in nature meaning they both contain hydrophilic or the polar side and hydrophobic or the non-polar region. So this allows bilayer formation. Next, membrane fluidity. Again, this is just viscosity and flexibility. And this is affected by the saturation of fatty acids. So the double bonds would actually cause kinks, which will prevent tight packing in the molecule, which then increase the fluidity. Last is variability. Of course, if you have different fatty acids and head groups, you will have a wide variety of molecules. This will give different properties than different functions. Now let's talk about the function of glycerophospholipids. Glycerophospholipids, they are the fundamental component of cellular membrane. So this gives the ability to create bilayer. So this bilayer will create a selective membrane that regulates the movement of substances in and out of the cell. Now take note, glycerophospholipids can exist in gel and liquid crystalline state. So that would be crucial for membrane fluidity. So the fluidity of this one would allow different processes such as membrane fusion, vesicle formation, etc. They also function in signaling pathways. Okay? Glycerophospholipids also function in signaling molecules. Next, let's have the sphingolipids. So they are complex lipids found in cell membranes, particularly in the nerve cells and brain tissues. So in this figure, you will see glycerophospholipids versus sphingolipids. So there is a distinct difference in their structure. This one shows the general structure of sphingolipids. So this is the sphingosine. Sphingosine is an 18-carbon amino alcohol with a long hydrocarbon chain. It also has an OH or hydroxyl group and amino group. Sphingolipid also consists of fatty acid chains. So this fatty acid chain is connected to the amino group. Lastly, you will have the head group. The head group is attached to the sphingosine backbone, which varies depending on the type of sphingolipid. Sphingomyelin is formed when a phosphate group is linked to one of the alcohol groups via a phosphate ester bond and is further connected to choline. You will have a glycosphingolipid if you see one or more sugar molecules. Now, there are different types of sphingolipids. Let's discuss them quickly. Number one is ceramide. Ceramide is the simplest type of sphingolipid. It is composed of sphingosine plus a fatty acid. Basically, this is the core of sphingolipids. This is also a precursor to other molecules. Next is the sphingomyelin. So these are phosphosphingolipids that contain phosphocholine or phosphoethanolamine group attached to your ceramide. Then you can also have a glycosphingolipid. So they are sphingolipids with one or more sugar molecules attached to the ceramide. And you can have different types of glycosphingolipids. You will have cerebrosides if it contains one single sugar molecule, such as glucose or galactose. If an oligosaccharide is attached to your glycosphingolipid, you will have a glangeoside. If you have more than two sugar molecules, it will now be called a globocide. Okay? 
Globocytes are involved in cell recognition and blood group antigens. For the properties, it is again amphiphatic. Sphingolipids, they also act in the membrane stability. So they contribute to the rigidity and stability of membranes. And as mentioned, the head groups can attach to different molecules. So sphingolipids, they have diverse functions. So this picture, you will see the general structure basically or formula of sphingolipids. For the function, the most important thing I think would be the myelin sheet formation. So they are critical components of the myelin sheet. Myelin sheet is the insulating layer that surrounds nerve axons in the central nervous system. Okay, so this is very important in the transmission of electrical signals. It has also a role in cell-to-cell -cell interaction. So they play a role in recognition and communication, especially in neural tissues and immune responses. They also function in signal transduction. So they participate in signaling pathways that regulate cell growth, differentiation, and apoptosis. Apoptosis is basically programmed cell death. Next, let's have the lipoproteins. They are complexes of lipids and proteins that transport lipids through the bloodstream. So here is the structure of lipoprotein. So you can see here the core of nonpolar lipids. So meaning here you will see triglycerides and cholesterol esters. So they make up the hydrophobic region of lipoproteins. Then you will see the hydrophilic layer, which consists of phospholipids, free cholesterols, and proteins called apolipoproteins. So the protein and phospholipid coating makes the lipoprotein soluble in blood despite their lipid content. For the properties, they vary in density, size, and composition, which affects their function and role in lipid transport. We have the HDL or the high-density lipoprotein. Based on the name itself, they have high protein content relative to lipids. And they are involved in transporting cholesterol from tissues back to the liver. So again, this is called the good cholesterol. You also have what we call the low-density lipoprotein. These are rich in cholesterol and are responsible for delivering cholesterols to cells throughout the body. Then you will also see the very low-density lipoprotein. So these are rich in triglycerides and transport them from liver and intestine to tissues for energy use or storage. For their function, of course, cholesterol transport. They also distribute energy. So lipoproteins like VLDL distribute triglycerides from the diet and liver to muscle and adipose tissue for energy storage or immediate use. Now, if there is an imbalance in lipoprotein levels, particularly the LDL and HDL, there would be health risks, particularly atherosclerosis. So this is where the plaque builds up in arteries, leading to heart disease and stroke. Now there are several types of lipoproteins. Okay, number one would be the chylomicrons. So they transport dietary triglycerides from intestines to other tissues. And as discussed a while ago, you have the VLDL, LDL, and HDL. Now let's go to the derived lipids. Derived lipids are a category of lipids that are formed from simple and compound lipids through hydrolysis or other chemical reactions. Now, unlike simple lipids such as triglycerides and compound lipids like phospholipids, derived lipids are not necessarily esterified fatty acids but rather they are often products of lipid metabolism or degradation. So they include the following. Fatty acids, so again, these are the building blocks of many lipids. Steroids, such as cholesterol, they are derived from sterols and play significant roles in cell membrane. Glycerol, the three carbon molecule. Vitamins, so vitamins such as a, D, E, K are considered derived lipids. Ketone bodies, they are produced from the breakdown of fatty acids, especially during fasting. And long chains of alcohols like cetyl alcohol, they are derived from fatty acids. So let's start with the first one, the steroids. Steroids are a class of lipids characterized by a structure of four fused carbon rings. So three of them are six-membered ring, which we call in organic chemistry as cyclohexane. And one of them, this one, 
is a five-member ring. One, two, three, four, five. So in organic chemistry, we call this the cyclopentane. So this structure forms a rigid planar backbone with various functional groups attached to it to different positions on the ring. So that would give a variety of steroids. For the properties, they are hydrophobic and nonpolar, making them insoluble in water, but soluble in nonpolar solvents. So the specific properties of steroids are determined by the types and positions of functional groups attached to the core ring structure. Steroids have different functions. Number one would be hormone. Steroids like testosterone, estrogen, and cortisol, they act as hormones which regulate various physiological processes such as metabolism, immune response, reproduction, and stress response. They also function in membrane structure. So some steroids like cholesterol are integral components of cell membranes. They influence the fluidity and stability of cell membranes and vitamins as well steroids such as vitamin d they are essential for calcium regulation and bone health now there are different types of steroids number one would be the glucocorticoids one example would be cortisol so these are involved in metabolism and immune response so we also have the mineralocorticoids one example would be aldosterone so these regulate sodium and potassium levels affecting blood sugar. Then sex hormones are also steroids. For example, testosterone, estrogen. So these hormones are involved in reproductive processes and secondary sexual characteristics. Finally, you have vitamin D. So this is a steroid involved in calcium absorption and bone health. Next, let's have cholesterol. Again, as mentioned, this is a type of steroid with the hydroxyl group at one end. So the presence of the hydroxyl group makes cholesterol slightly amphiphatic, meaning it has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. So cholesterols are synthesized in the liver but can also be acquired through diet. And they are carried to the body by the lipoproteins. Now let's talk about the property. Again, as mentioned, they are amphiphatic, but cholesterols are largely hydrophobic. So this hydrophobicness allows it to embed within the lipid bilayer of cell membranes. For the function, membrane fluidity and stability, it modulates the membrane fluidity by preventing the fatty acid chains of phospholipids from packing too closely in cold temperatures. It also restrains their movement in warm temperatures, thus stabilizing the membrane. And this is also a precursor to make hormones, so hormone production. Vitamin D is also cholesterol. Cholesterol is also used to make bile acids. Now let's talk about bile acids. Bile acids are synthesized in the liver from cholesterol. So these serve as primary detergents so they serve as primary detergents which emulsify dietary fats into smaller water-soluble micelles. So this process is essential for the absorption of fats and fat-soluble vitamins in the small intestine. Now when these bile acids join different functional groups, you will have your bile salts. Okay, so again, these are derived lipids, which are crucial for digestion and absorption of dietary fats. When bile acid like cholic acid combines with glycine, you will form the glycocholic acid. This is also called as the glycocholate. Now, when your bile acid like cholic acid forms or links with taurine, you will have the taurocholic acid or the torcholate. So this is the side chain of glycocholic acid. And this is the side chain of taurocholic acid. For the properties, they are amphiphatic. So the steroid nucleus gives the hydrophobic property. Then the conjugated amino acid, they form the hydrophobic property or region of bile salts. And again, bile salts are effective at emulsifying fat or breaking down fats. Again, the primary function of bile salts is to emulsify dietary fats in the small intestine. Okay, emulsification breaks down large fat globules into smaller droplets. So when they are small, the surface area is increased. 
Therefore, digestive enzymes like lipases can do their work efficiently. They also form micelles. Micelles are just tiny aggregates of lipids that keep fatty acids, monoglycerides, and fat-soluble vitamins in solution within the watery environment of the intestine. So the structure of micelles allow these molecules to be absorbed by intestinal cells. Now, once micelles are formed, fat absorption happens. So these micelles, they transfer lipids to the surface of the intestinal cells where the lipids are absorbed into the bloodstream. So imagine, if you don't have bile salts, the absorption of dietary fats and fat-soluble vitamins would not happen. Bile salts also play a role in eliminating excess cholesterol from the body. Okay, so cholesterol is converted into bile acids and then bile salts in the liver. Okay, so these bile salts are secreted into the bile and can either be reabsorbed in the intestine or excreted in feces. Now let's go to now let's go to the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are a group of lipid compounds derived from arachidonic acid. When we say arachidonic acid, it's a 20 carbon polyunsaturated fatty acids. So they are formed through the cyclooxygenase pathway or the Cox pathway. For the structure, they have five membered ring and two side chains. So this is your one, two, three, four, five. This is a ring and side chains here with various functional groups attached to it. So this one is the COOH. This one is OH. Prostaglandins are locally acting bioactive lipids that are not stored in cells but are synthesized on demand. They are also rapidly metabolized which means they have a short half-life and act close to where they are produced. For the functions, prostaglandins play a key role in the inflammatory response by promoting fever, pain, and swelling. So they basically sensitize nerve endings, which makes the sensation of pain more acute. Now, depending on the type, prostaglandins can either dilate or constrict blood vessels. So this would influence blood flow and pressure. Prostaglandins also help maintain the protective lining of the stomach and intestine. So this one would reduce the risk of ulcers. Then they are also involved in the regulation of ovulation or the menstrual cycle. They are also involved in the induction of labor. Second to the last would be the thromboxanes. Thromboxanes are also derived from arachidonic acid through the Cox pathway, similar to the prostaglandins. They are characterized by a six-membered oxygen-containing ring. So for the properties, they are also bioactive lipids with a role in homeostasis. When we say homeostasis, it's the process that stops bleeding. Prostaglandins, they are synthesized on demand and have a short half-life. Thromboxanes function in platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction. Thromboxane A2 or the TXA2 is the most well-known thromboxane and is crucial in promoting platelet aggregation. So this helps form blood clots to stop bleeding. Thromboxanes also cause blood vessels to constrict. So this would reduce blood flow and help to prevent blood loss after an injury. Last would be the leukotrienes. Leukotrienes are another group of bioactive lipids derived from arachidonic acid, but they are synthesized through the lipoxygenase pathway or the LOX pathway rather than the COX pathway like prostaglandins and thromboxane. Okay, so if you look at the structure, leukotrienes, they do not have a ring structure like prostaglandins and thromboxanes. Instead, what they have is a linear structure with multiple double bonds. Leukotrienes are potent signaling molecules involved in immune responses. So they are synthesized in the leukocytes. Leukocytes are white blood cells and they act locally. They influence inflammation and allergic reactions. For the function, inflammatory response and bronchoconstriction. Leukotrienes, they cause bronchoconstriction or the narrowing of the airways. So that is all for the part 2 of lipids.